This video picks up after the basic calibration in VixSnap and capturing test images in VixSnap videos. It assumes you have captured a set of calibration images with an acceptable score and gathered a set of test images using VixSnap. The simplest way to import images from VixSnap to Vic3D is to click the Vic3D icon in the VixSnap toolbar after acquiring calibration and test images. This will open Vic3D and automatically place the images in the correct folders. If you're using images that were captured previously, you can also bring them manually into Vic3D. Start by opening Vic3D and selecting Calibration Images from the Start page or click Calibration Images in the Projects menu. You can also just click the Calibration Images button on the toolbar. Navigate to the correct folder and select all your calibration images. Then click Open. If the folder has a lot of images, a simple trick is to find the search bar and type star cal star and hit enter. This will isolate only the calibration images. Select all these manually or use Control A. The selected images will appear under the Calibration Images section in the Images tab in the left window. If you have opened Vic3D directly from VicSnap, your calibration information should already be available. To begin a new calibration, click Calibration in the Navigation menu and select Calibrate Stereo System or click the Calibrate button in the toolbar. As you can see, the calibration score is good. The same information that is available in VicSnap, like center X and center Y and rig angles, can be found here too. The calibration target size will automatically be determined from the fiducial markers on the correlated solutions targets. For older targets, select the size that was used from the drop-down menu at the top left-hand corner. Click Accept. There's a comprehensive explanation of the calibration target selection included in the user manual. Let's take a moment to cover how to access this useful resource. Click Help and then User Manual. Click Search and type Calibration Target Selection. Keep this resource in mind. It should be the first place to look if you have any questions. Now, load your test images. In most cases, especially in a tensile test situation like this, the images after the test subject fractures are superfluous and can be omitted. So, to save time, we will select all the images up until the break and click Open. In some high-speed scenarios where there are tens of thousands of images, it can be laborious and sometimes problematic to select all the images in a folder. To save time in these instances, click Project and then Speckle Image Groups. Area of Interest Once the calibration and test images are imported into Vic3D, it is time to determine the area of interest. The area of interest defines the part of the image in which Vic3D performs correlation analysis. Note, sometimes this is referred to as region of interest or ROI. First, select the tool for the corresponding kind of AOI, rectangle, polygon, or circle, that is most appropriate for the sample. Usually, there are a few ways to draw an effective AOI. We'll show two ways here. First, Select the Polygon tool and move the cursor to the desired position in the Reference window and click the left mouse button. Follow the important area clicking to make points as you go. Double click to specify the last point of the polygon. For another way to achieve this AOI, begin with the Rectangle tool. Left click to establish the first corner and click again to complete the rectangle as shown here. For a test sample that includes holes, it is important to remove them from the area of interest. If you don't cut out these holes, Vic3D will generally drop data in this area because there isn't any information to correlate. This will slow down your processing and error around the holes is more likely. To cut out a hole, use the Cut Circle tool. Simply click to select three points on the edge of the circle and adjust as needed. More details on AOI tools and techniques can be found in the user manual in the comprehensive knowledge base. To edit an existing AOI, click the Pan Select tool. Mouse over any of the white nodes in your AOI. 
the mouse cursor changes to indicate node movement. You can delete a node by clicking the delete control point icon here, then clicking the desired node. The X icon deletes the entire AOI. Remember, you can always undo with control Z. If the merge polygons icon is selected, any overlapping polygons will be merged with each other. If the icon is not selected, overlapping AOIs will remain separate. Areas of interest can be moved by clicking anywhere inside the area and dragging to adjust. If you are zoomed in and need to pan the image instead of moving the AOI, the shift key can be pressed and held while clicking inside the AOI. Note that changing the reference image after selecting an area of interest will clear the selected area of interest, as each reference image can have its own mask. In some instances, especially with repetitive tests, stable setups, and intricate samples, it can be useful to save an AOI. To do this, after drawing the AOI, save the project as a template. Then, begin a new project from that template. Now that we have the AOI set, it's time to determine the appropriate subset and step size. The subset size controls the size of a data point. It must be large enough to ensure that there is a sufficiently distinctive pattern contained in the area used for correlation. The current size is illustrated by a grid briefly displayed on the AOI. You can bring that grid back up by clicking the Show Subset Size icon here. By default, VIC3D starts with a subset size of 29 and a step size of 7. For new users unfamiliar with DIC, we recommend letting VIC3D suggest a subset size. To do this, click the question mark icon here. VIC3D will choose a subset size which is calculated to give an optimal match confidence of 0.01 pixel for a given assumed noise level. The default of 8 works well for most cameras. This can be a good indication of the quality of your speckle pattern. Note, the suggested subset is conservative and will err on the side of caution. To accept the suggested size, click OK. To return without making a change, click Cancel. In this case, the pattern is good, so we are able to achieve better localized spatial resolution with a lower subset. A good rule of thumb is to zoom in to the largest speckle on your surface. Make sure that the yellow box covers the biggest speckle and contains a good mix of white and black pixels. This makes it easier for the software to find a match in the other camera and in your deformed images. If the yellow box covers all black, then there's no information there to track how the subset is deforming. For this test, a subset size of 21 is optimal. Next, adjust the step size to correspond to the subset size. The step size controls the spacing between data points that are analyzed during correlation. If a step size of 1 is chosen, a correlation analysis is performed at every pixel inside the area of interest. A step size of 2 means that a correlation will be carried out at every other pixel in both the horizontal and vertical direction. Note, analysis time varies inversely with the square of the step size. In other words, a step size of 1 takes 25 times longer to analyze than a step size of 5. In short, the subset should be larger than the average speckle size, and for most applications, the step size should be roughly one-fourth of the subset size. This provides the most information at the optimal analysis speed. For a subset size of 21, we'll set the step size at 5. Note, the yellow boxes are not individual points. There is some overlap depending on your step size and on the resolution of the cameras. A comprehensive explanation of subset, step sizes, and associated tools is available in the Correlated Solutions knowledge base. The link to that article is available in the description below. With the AOI, subset, and step size parameters set, click the Start Analysis icon to analyze your speckle pattern. This brings up a dialog box with several tabs. There are many options in each of these tabs which are explained in detail in the user manual and further illuminated in various application notes. Generally, the defaults are a good place to start. For specific test situations, contact our support engineers for more detail on analysis options. While it is beyond the scope of this video to dive too deeply into specifics, one quick tip before running the analysis. 
Under the Files tab, there's the ability to limit the number of files you want to analyze. To see the options, right-click in the window. For example, by clicking one half, the program will only analyze every other image. This can save significant time, especially in high-speed situations where there are tens of thousands of images. For this test, we'll select all the images. It is also a good idea to double-check that you are outputting to the correct folder. When you're ready, click Run. As you can see, the analysis begins and progress information is given. While the software runs, you can right-click in the window to change the view options and the variables. Change it to the 2D view here. Keep an eye on the projection error. It will turn red if the number gets higher than 0.1. This can let you know that there is an issue that needs to be addressed before it finishes the analysis. When the analysis is complete, click View Report to see a detailed list of information for each image. If this is important, right-click in the window to save as a CSV file. Note, this is the only way to access this report. When you're finished, click Close. Now, Look at the Data tab on the left and notice the newly created Out files. We'll be working with these in the next video. It is at this point that the next steps will be dictated by individual testing parameters and desired results. But for every test, drawing an accurate AOI and dialing in optimal subset and step size parameters is essential to successful digital image correlation. As with calibration and capturing test images, Every setup is different, so unique challenges can emerge. Our US-based support team is ready to answer any questions or help guide you through the process. Just get in touch if you're having any problems. In the next video, we'll cover basic DIC analysis in VIC 3D.